Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace, peace, and joy of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. My friends, as we gather this evening to welcome in the new year and kiss what it was goodbye, um, let us begin by opening our hearts to the healing power of our God's saving grace. Father, you are the one who fulfills every promise. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the fulfillment of the Father's promise. Christ, have mercy. Most Holy Spirit, you fill us with hope in the Father's promises. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring each one of us into everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of the world. We praise you. Let us pray. O God, who through the fruitful virginity of the Blessed Virgin Mary bestowed upon the human race the grace of eternal salvation, grant, we pray, that we may experience the intercession of her through whom we were found worthy to receive the author of life. Our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, This is how you shall bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and his gracious and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. 
so shall they invoke my name upon the Israelites, and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers, brothers and sisters, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to ransom those under the law, as, they, as that we might receive adoption as sons. As proof that you are sons, God sent the Spirit to his Son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then also an heir, through God. The word of the Lord. With you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The shepherds went in haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph. The infant was lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that they had heard about the child. Everyone who heard it was amazed by what that was told them by the shepherds. Mary kept all these things, reflecting upon them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as they had been told. When the eight days were completed for his circumcision, the child was named Jesus 
the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Alleluia. When I was first ordained to the priesthood, I was sent to a parish in Salinas. Salinas has two Catholic high schools, uh, one for boys and one for girls, and they are two completely separate institutions, but periodically they do come together um, for a variety of different occasions, including commencement and the baccalaureate. So I was still a fairly a newly ordained priest when um, the schools came to me and asked me if I would be willing to give the homily at the baccalaureate mass. The bishop was gonna preside and I would be the homilist. And I agreed, but with a certain amount of trepidation. Um, first of all, for me personally, uh, high school students, teenagers are, are probably the most challenging group for me to communicate with. Um, I think it's even worse now with social media and technology, but it's, it's challenging to engage them. And, and I always feel a little bit insecure when I'm called upon to, uh, to preach in those kinds of environments. Furthermore, it's a, it, it's a baccalaureate. It's not the commencement, but it feels like it needs to have a little of that in the tone of what it is you're going to do in the baccalaureate. And even though you're addressing the students, the graduates, their parents are there, their grandparents are there, their aunts or uncles or friends. So I don't want to create something that's just for the, the students. I mean, uh, there's a whole church full of people. Many of them probably don't go to church anymore. And so if they have a positive experience, Maybe it might actually bring them back. So there's a lot of self-imposed pressure. And the, the cherry on the cake of all of this is that we had a brand new bishop at the time, Sylvester Ryan. He was presiding. It would be the first time that he would ever hear me preach. So I was very anxious, and I worked very hard on that homily. I, I wrote it, and I edited it, and I cut it down, and edited it some more, and I practiced and practiced and practiced till it was just like a diamond. So the day comes, the church is packed, and I get up and I give the homily. And when I'm finished, uh, the congregation uh, gave me a round of applause. So I thought it, it went well. It, it must have gone well. So the mass is over and I'm standing outside the church and I'm, I'm greeting a few people. And out of the corner of my eye, I see this woman. And she's smiling at me in this very knowing way, sort of like a, a proud parent would look at you. And I thought to myself, She's, she's going to come over to me, and she's, she's going to tell me that that, that was the greatest homily she ever heard in her life. life. She, she has seen the face of God. God. Okay. <laughs> so um, she comes over, and she, um, she's smiling at me, and she says to me, has anyone ever told you that you have a beautiful smile? And the homily... Did you forget that the homily has made you decide to become a missionary? Did you forget that part? A smile. That, 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 and all that work, all that effort, and that's the thing she noticed. I have to tell you, everybody, uh, this coming October, I will have been a priest for 32 years. And in those 32 years, I have done a lot of things. I have raised money. I have remodeled churches. I have fired and hired employees. I have celebrated Mass for funerals and weddings and baptisms. I have celebrated Mass when I was sick as a dog and when I was absolutely exhausted. And the thing that people talk about more than any of those things is the fact that I seem to be happy. That's the thing that people talk about more than any of the other accomplishments. People notice that I'm happy, that I laugh, that I seem to be having a good time as I'm working and living my life as a priest. Now, whether that, that's coming from, from the sense that they're surprised to see a cleric who's happy, or whether they're just not supposed to see happy human beings in general, I'm not exactly sure. But that has been the constant refrain. And I would say to all of you that I do feel that I have been given the gift of joy. But it is a gift that has required effort and energy. It has required a sense of perpetuating. It had to be nourished and strengthened. And I bring that to you, everybody, 
because we are in a transitional moment right now, going from a year that has been extremely challenging into a new time. And what everyone seems to be saying and what everyone's talking about and where I see on the internet is this sense of goodbye 2020. I'm so glad to be leaving this year behind. And that's understandable. But I think it's important to realize that there will undoubtedly be challenges to be met in 2021 as well. We are not the first generation to have experienced a challenging year. Our ancestors have experienced plagues and economic recessions and wars and famines. And yet, it was most often their faith that sustained them during that time. This last year, Father Jim and I did a presentation on a, a book called The Book of Joy. And if I were to summarize that book for you and what I saw woven into every single chapter, is that joy is not contingent upon the circumstances of our lives. We all know people who have faced incredible challenges in their life, and they have continued to strive to be hopeful, cheerful, optimistic, and faithful people. And by the same token, we all probably know people who have been blessed immeasurably and who never stop complaining and whining and bellyaching about the conditions that they find themselves in. If you are a person of faith, Faith is inextricably linked to hope. And hope, by its very definition, is optimistic. So what we need to take with us into this new year is that if we believe that God came into the world as Jesus Christ, and if we believe that that man lived and taught and healed and died and rose from the dead, and that we are connected to him in fundamental ways, then that, that is hope. That is optimism. So if we are believers, we need to go into this new year with whatever challenges we must face by being hopeful, by being optimistic, by cultivating humor, love, and joy. That's what this is all about. No matter what anyone has ever told you, that's what that church is about, this tent, that table, that book. It is about hope. The unending and resurrecting hope of being a believer. And what I say to all of you, on 2020, on the eve of 2021, is what I've been saying to you since I got here, and I'll say it till the day I leave. To be a believer is to believe from the soles of your feet to the crown of your head. To be a believer is to believe absolutely that something wonderful is just about to happen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended in hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. As we prepare for a new year, let us bring our needs, our petitions, our hopes into the presence of our God. We pray that this new year might usher in a time of renewal, that the challenges we have faced might give way to peace and prosperity. 
we pray, pray to the Lord. For the spiritual healing of our world, for an increase in civility and diplomacy, that we might see an end to greed, injustice, and mistrust, we pray to the Lord. For the special intentions of Pope Francis, that we might live in fellowship with our brothers and sisters of other religions, that people of all faiths might pray for one another, for greater understanding and peace in the new year, we pray to the Lord. For all those facing economic hardship during these cold winter months, for the homeless and those who might be struggling to feed their families, we pray for their comfort, that they be met with kindness and generosity and kept safe from all distress. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all essential workers, especially those who joyfully interface with the public and provide hospitality and services to those in need, that God bless them richly in the new year with good health and great good humor. We pray to the Lord. For our parish family and nativity of Our Lady, that not only in this new year, but in all seasons to come, we might grow in our faith and service to others. May the star we raise be a beacon of God's love for all humanity. We pray to the Lord. This has been a challenging year in so many ways, but also a year of deep prayer and connection to our loving and merciful God. Let us continue to pray without ceasing for all those in need of healing and for those who care for them. In this special way, let us continue to pray for all those suffering from coronavirus, for their worried loved ones, and for anyone else in need of prayers tonight. I invite you, wherever you are, to say their names aloud at this time. Andre. May the great and mysterious power of the Holy Spirit protect all those who are ill and restore them to the fullness of health and well-being. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the repose of the souls of all who have gone before us. For Federico and Rosa Leibis, for Mary and Solana, for all victims of COVID-19, and for the consolation of their families that these and all the faithful departed rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Father, we bring these petitions before you. You are the source of our hope and our joy, not so much in what you do, but even more in who you are. Hear us and answer us in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord.
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands. For praise the glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who in your kindness began all good things and brings them to fulfillment, grant to us who find joy in this solemnity of the Holy Mother of God, that just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace and of this year of grace, so one day we may rejoice in its completion. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to the earth's ends, you've done marvelous things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the very author of salvation, your Son, Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty. They rejoice in your presence forever. May our own voices, we pray, be joined with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as together we sing. Holy, 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 Lord God. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, for you love the human race. You always walk with us on this journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we're gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you, and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus, your Son, our Savior, 
whom he led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life, the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Jesus that's been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we now have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope, Daniel our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, deacons, religious women, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into our world. Remember our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, the martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory of yours now and forever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us take a moment to share a sign of the Lord's peace. Peace with you. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, worthy to be shattered in my room, only say to me for my soul's salvation.
We have have received received this this heavenly heavenly sacrament sacrament with joy, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that it may lead us to everlasting life. For we rejoice to proclaim the blessed Virgin ever Mary, Mother of your Son, Mother of our Church. We do this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Well, in honor of your uh, attending tonight uh, on this celebration, we have a gift for you. Um, We actually have a 2021 calendar from the Tivy of Our Lady, and uh, we're going to be handing them out after Mass. They're there for you, and I think we have plenty. So uh, if you even need more than one, you can probably take them as well. So uh, take them and use them in good health. Um, you, for those of you who don't attend daily Mass, you might not know this, that we um, regularly celebrate daily Mass Monday through Friday at 9 o'clock. And we have been doing so in the back garden area behind the parish office. We've been calling it the Mary Garden because we have a, a beautiful Mary statue there now. It's a, it's a relatively small area and we have a, a, a good number of people that come to the Mass. Um, but last Monday, um, if you recall, it was, a, it was a pretty rainy day. Monday's my day off, so uh, Father Jim was presiding on his own that day. And um, it, was, it was pretty treacherous, and I felt really bad being at home drinking cocoa. He <laughs> was celebrating under a rain shower, practically. And so what we have decided to do, um, because we are predicting some rain for this coming week, Um, What we've decided is that if it is a rainy day, we are going to um, basically put up an announcement an hour before Mass on our website. So if it's rainy, check the Tibby of Our Lady website and see. And if that is the case, that we feel like it's too treacherous for us to celebrate Mass out there, then um, Father Jim and myself will actually be celebrating Mass in the church. We will live stream it. And what we would invite you to do is come to the parking lot. You can watch it on your phone or your tablet in the car. If that's not possible, we actually have it set up in such a way that you can just dial it in on your radio. You would just turn to uh, 94.3 FM and you can hear the Mass. And then when it comes time for communion, we would invite you to come to the double doors where the stained glass windows are uh, next to the office and we will distribute communion to you there. It's, um, I think it's just a lot safer for everyone for us to do it that way in case of a rainstorm. And we have a big uh, banner that we've made that has the actual designation for the radio just to remind you. And we also made some little sheets if you'd like to put one in your car. And obviously everybody is welcome. We're We're so so grateful grateful to to all of you for your financial support. support. If If you you are considering or needing to make some sort of a tax-deductible end-of-year donation, donation, we hope you'll keep us in mind, whether it's for our parish uh, general fund, or Raising the Star, or or even to uh, help us continue to use this beautiful uh, pavilion tent that we're enjoying so much during this time. Um, We are so very grateful for your support. It's really made a huge difference for us in all of our ministries and the decision-making that we've had to do this year. Um, Certainly, certainly I think think we have all acknowledged in in one way or another uh, what a challenging year it's been for everyone and for us here in the church as well. Um, There's been a lot of upheaval and uncertainty, and only a very limited amount of direction was coming to us from the diocese. So there was a constant need for us to be making decisions. Um, You know, the church was closed, and then it was reopened, and then it was closed again, and where were we going to be, and how was it going to work? And so um, it's it's been challenging making these decisions. But, but I, I do, do want to say, say that, that I felt um, your, your incredible support during this time, and I'm so very grateful for that. It's made these decisions and the upheaval that has been required that much easier. Your goodwill and your encouragement has really uh, made a huge difference for us here. Um, I myself have probably worked most closely with three people during this time. Um, Deacon Tom, Father Jim, and Kayla. And There has not been one day, not one day in this year that I have come downstairs and been faced with either one of them being grumpy or tired or discontented. Every single person in that circle has been encouraging and full of good humor. And so it it has made it just an incredibly different experience, um, that, that whole spirit. I'm so grateful to all three of them and to all of you as well. On behalf of the entire staff at Nativity, we want to wish all of you the happiest of New Year's and a year in which you will be safe and well and uh, protected by the great power of the Spirit for you and for your families. Happy New Year to you all.
I can't speak for Kayla or Tom, but my secret is bourbon. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Joy to the Lord.